Hello and welcome to this tutorial on uh, creating a piano dance game in Construct 3. So I'm just currently showing you the end result. You can see I'm clicking the tiles and gradually the tiles move along faster. Once you create a mistake like this, uh, there's a flashing tile and the game stops. You get a game over dialogue. In the HUD you can see your score and if it's the best score or not. So there are a few game over um, conditions. Either you click a white tile like I just did, or you click the wrong blue tile, or a blue tile which hasn't been clicked yet passes the delimiter here. And the delimiter is the black line here at the bottom. Um, so uh, that's generally how piano tiles game works. Um, so let you let me show you how that works. Uh, this is the main layout of the game. It consists out of a number of layers. The background layer just contains the background, whereas the lanes are the striped sprites running down the entire layout. Each lane holds a variable called lane. The tiles layer in the, uh, is the layer on which the tiles will be spawned. There are two types of tiles. A click tile, the blue one, and a white tile which is an empty tile. Both are grouped into a tiles family uh, because they share a common behavior, of course. Uh, tiles can hold an instance variable. The clicked variable is uh, set when a user clicks a tile. By doing uh, this, um, the tile can pass the delimiter, which is the black line here at the bottom, without causing a game over situation. Uh, the lane instance variable holds the lane on which the tile is spawned. Uh, the handled variable is a technical variable to synchronize the spacing of the tiles. And the counter instance variable is used to check if the user clicks uh, a tile in the correct order. Um, tiles have two behaviors, pin and flash. Pin is used to pin uh, the puller. Uh, the pin the tile to the polar object and flash is used to flash the tile when the game over event of course um, which is clicking the wrong tile for example clicking an empty tile or having to, a tile past the black delimiter line um, red lines uh, red tiles excuse me are pullers pullers contain a bullet behavior which is started when the user clicks the first tile the maximum speed has been set to a very large value and there is an acceleration, so bullets gradually increase in speed to make the game more difficult. Furthermore, the angle, uh, set angle checkbox is disabled. Um, it also contains a lane instance variable to indicate the lane the puller is using. The limiter, the black bar, uh, where a tile cannot pass unclicked, has its own layer and it always stays on top of the tiles. The HUD contains the score and the best score, and uh, the generator is a very fine line at the top of the screen. Here, um, It serves uh, its only purpose that a new set of tiles is generated once the tile passes this line. Uh, the destroyer is the line past uh, the bottom of the screen, here, and tiles get destroyed when they touch this line in order to avoid a memory leak. Lastly, there is a dialog layer which holds all of the object types that make up the game over dialog. The, the dialog is shown and hidden uh, by uh, and shown, show, shown and hidden, excuse me, uh, via uh, showing and hiding uh, the layer. So let's see how this works code-wise. So there are a number of variables used in the code. Uh, let's start with the generation part here. The generation part contains two uh, functions. The generate row function gets row as a variable and a cl has click tile parameter as a, as a variable. So why do we need that? For example, when the game starts, let's try retry. When the game starts, this is a row, does not have a click tile that's done deliberately because otherwise it would be game over right away uh, because it didn't pass the delimiter uh, it did pass the delimiter line without being clicked of course so the game only starts when clicking the first um, blue tile and from then on once it passes um, the delimiter line it's game over so for that first line we need a has click tile parameter 
So it just the function just generates a row of four tiles using a loop. Yeah? We first get a variable called clickable, clickable tile, um, and that's uh, set to the floor of random four, which means it can be a value of zero to three. Um, and then we add one to the row offset, which is um, the row from the bottom, which has the top row of the bottom, which has been spawned. So every time we uh, generate a row, we add one to that row offset. So the top row being generated always increases by one. Um, this function just generates four tiles in the loop, and it, um, the has click tile parameter denotes if a row needs to have a clickable tile or not. So the first row in the row, row, uh, re, row layout, excuse me, overlapping uh, the delimiter should not have one, and that's what we uh, say here. So if clickable, um, clickable for the clickable parameter of generate tile, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, uh, it, if it has a click tile, we just set one, uh, and the clickable tile as loop index uh, is the loop index of what we're looping in. Only then we send one to that uh, parameter. So that's generate row the generate tile passes three parameters the row the lane and uh, the node uh, if it's clickable or not so this uh, function generates a tile at a certain lane and row combination and the clickable parameter denotes if the tile needs to be clickable or not so we start by creating uh, the puller of the lane by picking rather the puller of the lane if the tile is clickable uh, create a, we create a click tile on the tiles layer. We set the x coordinate to take into account the loop index and the y coordinate as an offset to the puller object, uh, multiplied by the height of the tile. That makes sure all tiles are neatly tied to each other vertically. Uh, we start by marking it as not clicked and giving the counter, uh, um, giving the counter the order uh, uh, in which the tiles have to be clicked. Otherwise, an empty, we make an empty tile with the same logic. We pick the last created tile and pin it to the puller by using the bar style, so it keeps the correct distance to the, bar, to the puller. And we set the correct lane in the tile, of course. That's it. That's how a tile is generated. So on initialization of uh, the, the application, we uh, that's what we do here. So on every tick, we also update the score. Uh, and on start of the layout, we pick all of the pullers on the layout to uh, give them, uh, to disable the bullet behavior. Um, and we set its uh, bullet speed to 400. Um, and we set the angle of 90 degrees, so it moves down. Uh, we uh, initialize a number of variables here and we uh, generate row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to fill up the entire uh, grid. You can see here that the 5 row, which is the bottom one, does not have uh, a clickable tile. We uh, make sure the dialog is hidden so we can start and we use the local storage plugin to get this best score. And checking if it exists results in either the on missing event or the on has uh, on item is exists event being fired. And that's what happens here. So on item missing, uh, there's no best score, so we initialize it. And when the item uh, exists and the best score is saved, so we use the local storage plugin to get it. Uh, we use the asynchronous functionality of Construct3 to wait for the info to be gathered and then we set the best score, that's it. So that's for the initialization part. And then there's the uh, logic part. So when a tile is created, eh, the light blue and the dark blue shades in the click tile are two frames in an animation actually. So we stop the animation and we set the default to the light blue one. That's what happens here. So once we click uh, a click tile with the left mouse button, um, we only handle a click when the logic has started or when doing my very first click. So once the, the flag started is one um, or the click counter equals zero. So um, that's when a click is valid. We uh, mark the click tile as clicked so it can pass the delimiter without causing a game over situation. We make the, dark by, uh, the tile dark blue by changing the animation frame here. Um, if the game wasn't started yet, we mark it as started and enable the bullet behavior for the pullers. 
because the user clicks the first tile, the score is augmented, and the best score is augmented. Um, that's what we do here. Uh, if the user clicks a tile, it's not been one of the tiles that needs to be clicked in the correct order, the game is over. So that was uh, happening here. Uh, we flash the tile for 5 seconds, and we stop the polar objects. We stop the game as well, and we wait for 1 second, and then show the game over dialog. Otherwise, this is a correct click, so we increase the score and the best score, and we immediately save it. Um, and we also increase increase the click counter, no matter what, uh, that's the number of tiles that has been clicked, so it can be compared to the counter of the tile to see which is the correct one, actually. So when the tile overlaps the delimiter and it's not been clicked, um, then what happens is it occurs only once to avoid it, it, constantly, uh, it is constantly done when the tile is overlapping the delimiter, so that's why we need the trigger once uh, condition here. So in that case, we also flash the tile, we stop the pullers, we stop the game, we wait a second and we show the dialogue. So once the, tile, uh, once the tile on the first lane has passed the generator, it was not marked as handled, it can be generated. So what we do, it's we use the overlapping generator condition, which means it's constantly fired uh, when the tile is overlapping that generator, which can be quite some milliseconds, uh, depending on how fast the tiles are moving. That's why we uh, need a handled flag. Um, if the handled flag is not set of the tile, then we can fire this event. Otherwise, we set the handled flag to one, so it's marked, uh, also it's done only once. And then we generate a row. So we only do that for lane zero, uh, because um, it doesn't matter if a tile is overlapping lane zero, one, two, two or three, it's just the same thing. Um, so whenever a pass uh, a, a tile a new tile passes the generator line we just generate a new line, a new row that's it um, when the user clicks an empty tile and the game is started then the game is over um, and then again we flash the empty tile did the disable the bullet behavior set started to zero wait a second and call the show dialog and then finally at the bottom of uh, the screen invisible to the user there is, the, there is a uh, an object type called the destroyer and whenever it passes over the destroyer the tile is, is destroyed uh, to avoid a memory leak of course finally in the dialogue logic here uh, we have a separate group where the click is being resolved to restart the layout uh, in the show dialog uh, function we show the dialog by showing the layer and we activate the button by activating this uh, code group and we hide the dialog by hiding the layer by uh, yes by hiding the layer and by the F activating the button so i hope you learned something in this tutorial as always please like and subscribe and if you are interested i will leave uh, a link in the description of the video to the Sira store where, can you, where you can uh, pick up uh, this template